in today's episode we have frank frank is an astrologer and author and also runs the london school of astrology frank how are you hi there i'm good thank you alejandra yes thank you for taking the time to come on gentle touch frank tell me about your journey tell me about your very successful um how did this all come about with astrology Oh, well, I was 16, so that was a good 35 years ago, and I went to see an astrologer who uh, read my chart, and I went home that afternoon, and I thought, I've got to learn this subject. It's amazing. It's uh, so much more than what I thought it was. I mean, most people's idea of astrology is looking at the sun sign column or the, the star sign columns in a, in a newspaper, and this was the first time that I'd actually had my chart read, my whole birth chart, and it was a revelation. It was like somebody was speaking about uh, not only who I felt I was, but who I wanted to be as well. And I think that's one of the great strengths of astrology is to really help people plug in to uh, to not only what motivates them, uh, who they are in many ways, but also that sense of I'm here for a purpose. I'm here to do something. And astrology is very good at zooming in on that. Uh, so that was my initiation. I taught myself. I mean, uh, when people say they're self-taught, you're never really self-taught because every book, every lecture you go to, uh, every article you read, uh, these are all, um, uh, you know, these are ways of being taught by other people. And astrology is full of brilliant minds. So I was very lucky to be living in London and to be, uh, to be uh, around some of the great astrologers as they were lecturing back then. Uh, so I learned from the best, taught myself many things at home, studying charts, doing all of that. Uh, but it's been a it's been a great journey. Beautiful. When you first went to see um, to see get your birth chart read, was it intuition or did something spark your curiosity? What? How did that went? Uh, was it intuition for for what? For you the birth chart it... to go see the astrologer. Oh, I see. Uh, no, um, my my mum. She was always interested in seeing psychics, astrologers, uh, and we went to see a woman who was a psychic, who then recommended a friend of hers, a man called Tad Mann, and Tad was living in London. He's an American astrologer. He's still around working, uh, and he he was living in Kensington in London at the time, and both my mum and I went and visit him, visited him for uh, a consultation. Uh, so it wasn't intuition. It was curiosity. I'd been reading a few books back then, there were two go-to books that everyone read. I think one of them was um, Linda Goodman's Sun Signs, which was the great, uh, great book uh, produced in the late 60s, really, and was a, a bestseller. It was on the bestsellers uh, list for, for many weeks in America. It became a classic. And there was also a book called Parker's Astrology, or the, um, I think it's called, I forget now, I think it was... Uh, the real astrologer, uh, the Parker's astrology, uh, Derek and Julia Parker, and they're in their 90s and they're still going strong. So uh, it's um, those two books were probably the books I read. And you can see from behind me, I've just still got hundreds of books that I dip into, hundreds of books that people have left for me or I bought myself. And it's one of the subjects that when you start, you never, uh, you're never satisfied with okay, this is what I know, I'm finished, I know the subject. There's always a new chart, there's always a new idea, there's always um, uh, a new client that you see that teaches you something new. So we're forever students, we're eternal students when we're astrologers. That's beautiful because it just goes to show that we, we should be constantly learning, we should be constantly evolving. Frank, for the person that may not know, how can we describe what a birth chart is? Right. Well, a birth chart is like a two-dimensional map, 360-degree uh, wheel, uh, that um, is a snapshot of where the planets were according to our position on Earth at the time you were born. So, for example, if you 
Uh, if the sun was rising when you're born, then the sun in the chart, one of those glyphs that we use, one of the planets, even though it's not a planet, we call it a planet, um, would be on the ascendant, as in the rising sign. So, it, And maybe uh, as you're being born, um, the sun is setting, so the sun would be on the opposite side of the chart. So it's a visual representation of should you be able to see the planet as you're being born from your position of birth, uh, it's a representation of where they were uh, at that moment. Beautiful. What can a birth chart tell us about ourselves? Well, it'd be easier to say what can't it tell us. Um, it's um, I, well, it's interesting because over the years, when you learn astrology at the very beginning, when you begin learning uh, the subject, uh, you think it can tell you a lot more than it can in some ways, like predicting the future. You seem to think, ah, there's a transit coming up, this is going to happen to me. And we can talk about this in a moment. It's not really, uh, it doesn't really work like that. And yet, um, so you think, oh, well, I'm a, I'm a Gemini, or I'm a Virgo, or I'm an Aries. Um, this means the following. And then you realize that you have the other planets along with uh, the houses and, and many other things in different signs. And so you're a, a sort of big eclectic mix of all the zodiac with emphasis on different signs. And so you're born, I believe, you know, I believe that we sign up for that. We sign up for our birth charts. Um, it doesn't really matter um, whether you believe that or not, but we're born with a birth chart that has a whole range of um, qualities, energies, and you could say that we are born with that sort of DNA, astro DNA, and we are looking in life to have those energies and those needs fulfilled to express them. Now, you may go down a completely different road from somebody else with a very similar chart because you've got different parents, you're living in a different society, perhaps, you might not even have the right to vote or to drive, or, uh, you know, you, you may be in a war-torn place or in a place where there's tremendous famine. So the birth chart is a moment, it's like a blueprint of your life, should you have the opportunity to express it. Now, people are born every day and they don't live beyond weeks, months, years, sadly, for all sorts of reasons. And the birth chart doesn't say that. It doesn't say this person is born, they'll only have a life uh, span of months or, or 10 years. And you know that because you look at the charts of twins when one of them dies early or one of them gets ill or they have very different lives in many ways. So really it's a... Ah, it's, um, I mean, it's funny, you know, if the big hot topic in the last couple of years is everything about being binary, non-binary. The chart is incredibly non-binary. We might think, oh, I'm a Gemini or I'm an Aquarius, but it's got so many other facets to it of masculine, feminine, night, day, uh, Eastern, Western, Northern, Southern. There's, there's just so many different colors to the palette of the chart. So in, um, in many ways, it, uh, it's a long answer to your question, but it's, um, it's a map of potential, really. And how we use that depends on our awareness, our experience. I always say to people, you know, you may be twins uh, or born at the same time, but you, you'll meet different people who provoke different experiences from you or situations out of you. So you can't look at a child and say, this person is born to be the following or their life will be this way. Because I'll show you somebody born pretty much the same time who may have shared a lot of characteristics, a lot of energy, but their life took them in a very different direction because of the other things that the chart doesn't show, like gender, uh, se sexual preference, um, the color of your skin, all the things that affect how people treat us uh, for good and for bad. Uh, so, um, yes, it's a, it's a blueprint, and that can tell you an enormous amount, but it's not uh, a fait accompli. It's not written as only one way. And that's the, the passion that I feel when I teach at my school, the LSA. Um, I'm really passionate about getting people to realize that, oh, it's, you 
you don't have a bad Venus or your sun doesn't mean you will only do this in your life. It's um, the more open you are to possibility, the more you're open to embracing ideas and becoming different variations of who you were born to be. Beautiful. Um, Frank, is there a way we can work with our with our charts? Yes, yes. Uh, a lot of people are studying astrology. Um, over the years, I've taught thousands of people all over the world, um, often visiting there. And uh, I now have a school. The LSA has a school in China and we have a school in Japan. And it's always interesting to meet people in different societies with different expectations of fate and free will sometimes and to um, uh, to present my particular approach to astrology and at the london school of astrology we have a lot of different teachers some of them are psychotherapists some of them are uh, tarot readers as well who use astrology and they've all got their life experience so uh, in a way um i would say whatever you have discovered about yourself whatever talents you have you can bring those to astrology uh, so i've got a client at the moment um, who's just become a student and he's mad on bitcoin and um, all the different different current um cryptocurrencies now that that goes way over my head i'm really not interested in any of that to be quite honest maybe i should be but hey um people are more interesting than than money for me or, or bitcoin and he's fascinated to watch the planetary cycles uh, when uh, the money goes up the the exchange goes down all of those things i don't know about uh, so um uh, and then we have students at the LSA who are who are therapists wanting to add astrology to their toolkit. What I would say is if you're interested in the subject, go a little bit beyond simply reading about your sign. The newspaper columns, and I've written them in the past, and I was a bit sniffy about them originally. Um, I thought, mm, you know, um, it's just sort of pop astrology or journalism and but i learned a lot about how to write succinctly 50 words 70 words uh, for a sign and really get to the heart of it so i've got a lot of respect for people that do it um, who are astrologers it used to be that it was just the office boy or or, or girl in <laughs> write them in the in the lunch break for nothing um but there are lots of good astrologers writing them so i would say have a look at that it's a great moment to reflect on yourself of what you want in the day but if you're interested in going further go further get yourself a book go online um, and go a little bit further with the subject what i would say though is be careful what you read there's a lot of yeah they often say um there's a lot of free content yeah. online that's content free you know that's the problem um there's a lot of stuff out there that puts two and two together and then ends up with a very dangerous 5.6 calculation so for example i tell this tell this a lot um when i'm being interviewed about once a month i get a phone call from somebody i don't know somebody who's um gone online they've read something that's really disturbed them about their chart and they've typed in astrologer astrologer frank or school of astrology uh, found me uh, called me up and said is it true is it will i die of this or does this mean i'll never have any money and you have to undo a lot of the crap that's written there because um, like anything any subject that's popular there's a lot of people doing it that don't have the wherewithal and the ability to say something carefully or even the experience to know that these assertions are nonsense uh, so i would say go out there look for a good book uh, people can always email me i'll recommend some good books uh, but be extra careful what you allow into your head to worm its way because what we don't want from such an inspiring subject like astrology is um, negative oh you'll never have this or you'll always be this worming its way into your head and that's just badly written badly conceived astrology so there's always a proviso there's always a caution that i say is, is go out there and search but if you start to read stuff that upsets you or worries you leave that alone and find somebody that's going to talk to you about the possibilities instead of so-called definites that really don't 
don't ring true and don't stand up to any sort of testing. So you can take your chart. Um, once you've discovered there's lots of tools now online and on phones to um, uh, to be able to calculate your chart, uh, but you need to find good books or good websites that will interpret it ethically and in a way that you feel inspired rather than worried uh, about it. Beautiful. Thank you for that, Frank. So our star sign, how important is it to know where our star sign is in our chart? Well, the star sign is really the sun sign. It's where the sun is positioned in your chart. And the reason they became so popular uh, and are in newspapers and magazines and online is because the sun is very predictable. So it will spend a month from our point of view, moving through the signs. We're actually moving around the sun. A lot of uh, astronomers or people who are anti-astrology without knowing anything about it think that we astrologers don't know much about astronomy. Uh, but um, from our point of view, it appears as though the sun is moving through the zodiac, which is the sort of uh, the backdrop of stars or the area of the sky that we might call Gemini or Aquarius, etc. And so um, the sun sign is, is will move in roughly uh, the 20th, could be 21st, 22nd of each month into a new sign, um, different dates each year, uh, because it moves in particular times. So one year, for example, the sun might move in to Aries, the beginning of uh, spring in the Northern Hemisphere. On the 20, 20th of March, it might be the 19th uh, as well. It depends on uh, it depends on exactly when it moves in and it's there for a month. So when people were looking, uh, and it was about, I think it was 1930 when sun sign astrology became uh, popular in in the UK. A um, astrologer called um, Naylor, I think it was, I forget his first name, uh, wrote a quick biography on Princess Margaret, who had just been born, the Queen's sister, uh, the late Queen's late sister. And people were very interested. They were fascinated uh, at somebody describing her birth chart. And the newspaper editors said, uh, can you do something more regularly? And so they thought, well, let's do the 12 signs because at least people can look them up or we can write them in 21st of March to the 20th of April, that type of thing. Um, unless you're on the cusp, it's very easy to find that uh, and to work out which sign you are. And so the sun is this very important, powerful part of the chart. Um, a lot of people think, oh, it's my star sign, it's my sun sign, therefore it's my personality. When you go deeper into astrology, you realize it's actually talking about a journey. Each sun sign or star sign has a particular journey. So, and then we can use that journey in many different ways. So I, I keep mentioning the sign of Gemini, I don't know why, but um, Gemini is, for example, born to be the communicator. So all Geminis have signed up with the sun. They may have planets in other signs and other focuses in the, in the chart. But the sun in Gemini means that the focus in life is to communicate in some way. Now, some Geminis might do that through astrology. They might do that through uh, politics, through um, writing, journalism, whatever it may be. So each of the signs or the sun signs, because uh, you could have moon signs and mercury signs where the other planets are in the same part of the zodiac. Each of the sun signs is a particular goal. It's a particular journey that we take. So there aren't 12 types of people, but on a very simple initial level, there are 12 journeys, 12 initiations, and they're represented by um, the 12 signs. And throughout history, we see 12 in many ways. You've got the 12 disciples, of course, revolving around the Son of God, literally the Son of God. So um, the symbolism in the Bible, the symbolism in many holy books relates to, of course, the planets, the zodiac, and the number 12. So um, this, you'll read this and see this in so many, many different ways. But the sun sign isn't like, well, I'm a Taurus, so I'm stubborn. Um, Taurus is about attachment. It's about uh, the importance of, of um, building and developing something, being in it for the long term. Taurus is the rock. It looks after people. It's the foundation on which other things can be built. Uh, and so there are, in a way, when you learn astrology beyond simply reading about your, your star sign, you realize they're, uh, they're all 
archetypes of human experience. Aries is the baby and it goes all the way through to Pisces. So there's a journey which I often do when I do open houses and open days uh, for my school. I'll go through the signs and say, you know, we begin with Aries, the newborn baby, and then Taurus is, is about fingers and toes and food, and Gemini is the baby learning to speak. And each sign is actually a part of the journey of life. Uh, so it's very archetypal. Uh, and astrology is a language of symbols. Uh, you can just look at them in a very simple way, or you can uh, try to explore them in a profound way and say, this actually represents something inside of me, of what I'm doing, who I am. Uh, so, yes, the sun sign is important. It's just one of many different factors. Uh, these days, the millennials, are all post-millennials, um, uh, will call it SMR. Your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising oh, sign. Oh, yes. The big three. Yeah, you may have heard that quite a bit, SMR. Um, and they're the three that I would say are probably the first places to start when you're looking at a chart, uh, because they represent three different aspects of who you are. Yeah. And would that aspect change or, or, or does it change on circumstances, environment or free will? Oh yes, all of those things, yes. Um, so it's like you're born with a particular seed and whether that gets watered, it could get poisoned, that seed, it could grow with the help of other seeds around it um, and that seed may grow into a tree on its own out there on its own or it could be a tree in a forest where there's a lot of communication a lot of connection between people um, so in a way it's the seed or the acorn that's what the chart is whether it grows in one way or the other um, depends on the people around us and our choices um, I'd also say that um, I've just written about the astrology of crime or the astrology of serial killers. Oh, I saw it. And it's something that I... Oh, right, right. I, it's something that I really feel strongly about, not serial killers, but the idea that there's not something in somebody's chart that makes them a serial killer. It's, it's um, so much about how the personality is developed the experiences and the choices people make. There's something, there's a point in the article where I say a lot of people share the same positions in their chart, the same um, date of birth, etc. But at one moment where we might say, forget it, or I'm going to call the police, the serial killer will decide to murder that person, you know? So it's about decision. It's about intent. So the chart doesn't say, it can say what I'm motivated to do, but it doesn't say what I'm going to do at the end of that. You know, what am I? What have I decided to do? Uh, so, free will comes into it um, in in a major way. Yeah. Beautiful. I actually saw the astrology of serial killers, um, and it was it was so rich in content, so rich in um, we had the graphs as well that I didn't really understand it. No, it was written for um, uh, for an astrology magazine for astrologers. So yes, yes, it was um, certainly wasn't for uh, a sun sign um, group, really. Yeah, so it, beyond that, yes. Yeah. Beautiful, love it. Uh, when it comes to compatibility in romance, in business, in friendships, would this have a have an effect? Yes. Again, it's more complex and more interesting than you imagine. So when we learn about astrology, we learn that the fire signs and the air signs are supposed to get on with each other. The fire with the fire and the fire in the air and the air in the air, the air in the fire and earth and water are supposed to get on with each other. That's something you learn in sort of astrology 101. And it's very simplistic because if we think about the elements, fire and air do mix. Fire and water would extinguish or burn out uh, each other. And so you can look at the elements as being uh, an important way in. Each sign is a particular modality and element. So each sign is one of the four elements. Um, so Often that's what we learn. All oh, the fire signs get on well with each other, or uh, the air signs do, etc. Uh, or look for another fire sign incompatibility. And of course, 
Ah, it depends. It depends on what you want in relationship. You can use the chart. Over the years, I've had many a client come and say, can you look at this person's chart? Are they compatible with me? And I want to say compatible in what way? And one of the things that is super important is to be compatible with yourself, to understand who you are. Because we know that if you understand who you are, what you've got to offer, the things that aren't necessarily as attractive about you that could could be, you know, impatience or irritation, whatever it may be, um, we have a better understanding of ourselves and then we make better choices. And it's a bit like the law of attraction. It's a bit like any of those ideas where if we know ourselves better, we make better choices and better people appear in our lives as well. It's just how it works. Uh, we do attract track better, uh, shall I say, more compatible qualities from other people. So on a simplistic level, yes, you can say, oh, I've got my moon in a water sign. I should look for somebody else with the sun, moon or ascendant in a water sign. But you might meet somebody who's got no concept of getting in touch with water, which is the emotional realm. So you might meet somebody who's blocked that out, even though they've got water in their chart. They've just said, I don't cry. Boys don't cry. I, you know, I'm, I'm determined never to show my feelings, you know. So you need, in spite of the chart, you might meet somebody that appears on the surface to be quite compatible. But in reality, you're meeting somebody who's got very different ideas about who they are. Um, it might be a different belief system. Um, you know, there, there are so many other ways that sort of get in the way of compatibility, I would say. Um, sadly, it would be nice to be able to simply say, oh, yes, meet that person and connect with them and you'll be great. Uh, it doesn't work like that. Um, but the key I always say to people is focus on your chart. And I do that with my clients. I'll say, yeah, we can look at them, but let's look at what you need, who you are. Understanding that means you'll make better choices, full stop. So astrology is very good at looking at that. But also my idea of what a good relationship would be for you might be quite different from what you want at this time in your life. You might be somebody that's very independent very free-spirited, and you've always been quite rebellious, maybe. You've seen the world differently from people. But you may be at a point in your life where that is great, and you've done that, and it's in you, but right now you actually want to settle down. You want to have a different type of existence. So with astrology, it's important not to presume too much about the person. In client situations, I always encourage a dialogue I'm not doing what I'm doing right now and just talking and talking and talking. It's always a dialogue with the client, what they want, what they're looking for. Tell me more about this. Does that apply to you? How do you express this? And I get a feeling of the level, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way, but the level that they're exploring who they are. You know, some people come to me and they've got a wildly creative, imaginative chart, and all they want to know about is money. And I want to say to them, what about the rest of your chart, you know? And over the years, I've had to bite my tongue sometimes. I don't do that often, but I, over the years, I think um, uh, I sometimes say, well, okay, we'll, we'll look at what you need to look at, of course. But the rest of your chart is enormously creative. That's It's not just about money and building and developing. So there are... Um, uh, lots of ways. That's a very long answer to your question. But uh, compatibility, not so simple as the books, the basic sunshine books would like you to believe. Oh, thank you so much for that, Frank. Frank, um, what are your uh, views on astrocartography? Astrocartography, yes. Um, love it. I use it. I use it a lot with my clients. What it is for people uh, who haven't heard of it before, it's called different things because Jim Lewis, who sort of rediscovered it, it was used in ancient times. Uh, but Jim Lewis in the 1970s, an American astrologer, discovered that you could, with computers, you could put the chart, because it's a circle, you could put the chart over the globe. And so per certain parts of your chart would connect to different parts of the world. And now that he then he trademarked it, astrocartography, with the little asterisks in between. And you, you may have seen that. If you go to the astrology shop in London, you'll see that they do the maps there. And it's a, it's a fabulous thing to explore. 
It's also known as astro astrolocational, astrogeography, locational astrology, lots of words for it. What it really is, it's a, a way of looking at how you respond to other parts of the world based on your birth chart. And it may be places that you've never even visited, but you may be interested. For example, my dad was very interested in um, Russian literature. He was interested in socialism, communism. He had a lot of books on Marxism, lots of different interesting um, philosophies and, and ideas, political ideas. And his Mercury, which is the planet linked to talking, thinking, writing, expressing, runs through Moscow. And I used to always think that was very, very funny when I was starting out. I thought, wow, okay, he thinks his thinking line run through um, the place where a lot of his ideas, a lot of his interests have come from, a lot of his books. Uh, many years ago, I inherited about 2,000 of his books. So I believe me, I've been through the ones to keep and to, to pass on to people. Um, I'm very, very political. So the chart, the astrocartography map, is this extra tool. It's this fabulous tool showing where parts of the world uh, where you resonate with certain parts of the world. And there are lots of, I'm actually teaching that in, in November. You need to, uh, through the LSA, you need to know the basics of astrology to get the most out of it, to be quite honest. Uh, but I love teaching it, and I've taught it all around the world because it's one of those subjects that connects you to places, even if you never go there, even if um, it might be that your Venus line, which is often to do with relationship, not always, is... Um, running through where your partner's family is from. You may never have visited there. So I had a, a client a few few years ago, I think. Uh, she's, with, with her son's permission, she gave me her son's chart midway through the consultation. And she said, would you, because um, I always need permission of other people if I'm going to be looking at their chart uh, in a consultation. And she said, my son's had a lot of trouble settling down, working, finishing his uh, high school diploma. This is in America. Uh, where should he go for university? We've got two offers. And one offer, there was a, a Jupiter line running through. Now, Jupiter is all about education, but it's also about having fun and being over the top. And the other place, the other university or, or college that he was um, had an offer from was um, had a Saturn line through. And Saturn is about hard work and discipline and slogging it and, and being committed. And I explained uh, both of those to her. Um, and I, I, she never got back to me on it. So I don't know whether um, he ended up going to the Jupiter line and ended up having more fun, maybe dropping out or just having one long party for three years, or whether he went to the Saturn line and really um, knuckled down and worked on it. Um, so you can use it for all sorts of reasons. When I teach it, um, one of the things I teach is that Yoko Ono, her chart, her Venus runs through Liverpool, and John Lennon's Venus runs through Tokyo. <laughs> so it's so interesting to see the more and more examples of people who, uh, particularly in the public eye, who have fascinating lives. You can say, uh, you know, if they're a politician or a famous person, uh, and they have experiences through the world. It's always interesting. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Frank, am I right in saying you're also a palm reader? I am, yes. I, I began learning palmistry about a year after astrology. So I think I was about 17. I went to see a really uh, <laughs> very eccentric lady who uh, who read my palm. In London? Uh, in London, yes. she's um, She became a friend for many years. She'd been uh, dead now, I think, a good 10, 12 years, sadly. And her name was Sally Fry. And Sally... Um, told me something a bit disturbing. She implied that I would be married at 21 and that I, my partner would die. And I left there thinking, I'm going to learn this bloody subject and prove you wrong. Because surely, if everything's written, what are we doing here? If everything's just a play for some almighty to be watching us act out, I, I, even at the age of 17, I thought, that can't be right. And, you know, I'm in Aries, and Aries is very much a self-determining sign you know i want to live my life i want to do my thing even if there is fate 
versus free will and and we don't have as much free will as we think as an Aries I was like well I'm going to learn this and I thought I want to see what she's looking at and of course that didn't happen and it reminded was such a great lesson at an early stage to think the power that an astrologer or a palm reader has in what they say and how they say it. And I was disturbed about it for a while until I learned the subject enough to know that um, that wasn't that wasn't the case, you know. So um, it taught me, I mean, I made a lot of mistakes along the way. I was seeing clients from about the age of 21, which is super young to be doing it. But my attitude was, I want to learn, I want to be with people. I want to. I want to get. You know, I want to master these subjects. So I've got to see clients. I can't just sit there uh, learning it just from books. You really need to get out there. Um, and so um, from twenty one, it really taught me uh, what to say, what not to say. But of course, you make mistakes and you have regrets of saying too much or not saying the right thing. Nowadays, I hope I have far, far fewer of those. But palmistry i love it it's a instant subject instant with astrology what's your birth time let's calculate the chart somebody just shoves their hand under your nose often happens believe me this is why i don't tell people what i do for a living because parties are never fun there's always you know tell me tell me um and uh but it's it's a it's an amazing roadmap into the life uh, and the palm, all the lines, they change over the years, sometimes substantially, sometimes not. But they constantly reflecting the rest of us. If we're poisoning our body with, with cigarettes, drugs, with things that are bad for our health, the hands, as well as the rest of the body, will start to show it. Uh, for example, you know, if we're being um, careless with... Um, sexually transmitted diseases or, or, or we're being you know being protective of ourselves um the hand will show what we're bringing into our lives what we're what we're um uh, what's coming into our health as well so i i love palmistry um i haven't taught it for a few years but i really maybe 2024 will be the year that i get back to doing an online course again uh because it's such an amazing subject as well. I love them both. But the palmist that taught me, she said, oh, when you learn palmistry, she was very like this, Sally, she said, you'll just, you'll let go of astrology. <laughs> um, I didn't. I always use both with clients over the years. Um, not so much now um, because a lot of it's online, but I'll sometimes say to a client, can you just stick up your hand so I can have a quick look at, <laughs> at that? Um, but they're different subjects, but they really are talking about the same person, the same situation. Uh, they've just got different ways of going around it or about it. Beautiful. Frank, what would you say to the individual that is worried of having a negative, you know, like this will happen, a death, a car crash? What advice could you give someone? Well, I would say try to, I mean, it's, it's sometimes you go to a, for a consultation. Uh, if you're going to pay five, 10, 20 pounds or more for a um, peer side consultation, then realize you get what you pay for often. Yeah, you may get somebody genuine, but you'll also get the sort of predictive type of thing that can really worry you. Now, um, I would say try to avoid Anybody that talks about death, you may not know that until you sit there and listen to them and you think, oh, hang on a minute, I don't, this is, this is unethical and it's most likely untrue, you know. Um, but yet a lot of palm readers, a lot of astrologers, a lot of psychics, particularly in other countries, not so much in this country, but have a pressure to be telling you the future. And this is where I, I have interesting conversations with my students in China and Japan because they come from a thing where well, we're expected to tell somebody what will happen. And I've never really, in the last 25 years maybe, never really seen it that way. For me, the chart, the palm, whatever you look at, is a guide to navigating what's ahead. If you simply say you'll get married in two years and divorced in five, how does that help anyone? And how and is that is that true? I mean, it's it's there's so many levels uh, to question 
here. Uh, so I would say if anybody talks to you about predicting any sort of illness, uh, death of yourself or anyone around you, um, uh, you know, just just leave, just just step out of that. Don't allow that into your into your um, head, really, into your aura, shall we say? Um, so, a respectable, responsible, ethical reader, astrologer, tarot reader, palmist um, won't be talking about those things. They'll be talking about um, maybe your health if they're medically qualified i never talk about people's health because i'm not qualified to talk about medicine um but so you know sometimes i talk about you know go swimming um learn to breathe differently maybe you know there are different things in the chart that sometimes just say um this is the sensitive area of the body so take care of that it's not a warning it's not a prediction but sometimes i might generally talk about air signs needing air needing to learn to breathe properly and to to reposition themselves whatever it may be something very simple like that so we have to be very careful not to be making predictions astrologers would argue till they're blue in the face uh with me that some some astrologers would say absolutely astrology is about prediction and you've got to have an 80 percent rate all of that nonsense i remember being challenged by somebody in istanbul when i was there uh saying i've got an 80 percent prediction rate and everything and i've got this and i do that and i'm thinking but how helpful are you to anybody and if you're telling somebody that they're going to get married in two years and divorced in five why would they bother getting married um, wouldn't it be better to talk to them about who they are, what they need, and how to navigate relationships, or what, um, how best to express themselves in relationship, than to just simply make a, a prediction? Um, and and so it's it's a it's a field, sadly, that's wrapped up in what could be quite dangerous. And I think this is why the critics can be. Uh, very disparaging about astrology because uh, it is it is wrapped up in this fortune telling now, i'm a great believer in making your own fortune discovering and working out who you are being authentic to that person and that person might change over the years you don't have to be fixed but being authentic in the here and now and in some way doing expressing who you are at least once a week you know we can't quit our day job often we can't just say the mortgage will take care of itself but what we can do is say if i feel like i'm a natural writer i could be writing one evening a week or i could be dedicating my time to dancing on a friday evening that's what i'm called to do maybe i'm too old maybe my legs aren't strong enough to to dance anymore but i can do something of that of that inner expression uh, so that's what astrology is so good at doing it's good at saying this is who you are be it um uh, the parkers who i mentioned earlier who wrote the complete astrologer that was it called and parker's astrology often talked about aries and uh, of course i remember this being in aries about aries being very 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 selfish and my understanding of that is really that aries is just it just doesn't hide it <laughs> i think every sign everybody's selfish in their own way aries just doesn't hide it but the idea of telling aries not to think of themselves or put themselves first or telling taurus to hurry up or gemini to stop talking or cancer to stop crying you know these are anti their nature and so in astrology it's instead of saying to aries stop being impatient their nature is to be Im impatient come on let's get going we need that energy in life it needs sometimes curbing a little bit if it's getting up everybody's noses and blocking their progress but let's not stop people from being who they are and often astrology is written as like well leo stop showing off or something well show off if you want to be who you are enjoy it you know <laughs> find a way to express yourself yeah. beautiful beautiful i i love how you clarified um the bit of um it being unethical because i actually do have a family friend that went to a palm reader and told her that her dad was going to die and the anxiety the pain the hurt um ate at her and 
uh, her dad actually did have a car crash. Right. Yeah, so right. so it was that element of healing, the element of peace, the element of just knowing how do we navigate certain things. Frank, what is your favorite book? What's my favorite book? Um uh with 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 what? Which which subject? Astrology? With anything. Anything. Oh, gosh. I don't have a favorite book. It may be whatever I'm writing at the moment as well, uh, because you've got to love what you're doing. Um, I did a fundraising book last year, not on astrology, but I did it on the um, phenomenon of, of fame, uh, the TV series, the movie, all of that. And that was a great fundraising project. So I was in love with that for about a good six months, you know, loving writing about meeting the people, interviewing them. Uh, it was called Gonna Live Forever. And uh, such a such a lovely project. So my, I would say on an Aries level, if I'm being self-centered, my um, favorite book is whatever I'm in the process of writing or has just completed. But I've, as you can see, I've just got, I've got a house full of about 4,000 books on every subject you can think of. But my main uh, subjects are uh, astrology, palmistry, uh, as well as uh, music, film, television that sort of thing I, I and i've got i've got a good 500 biographies as well of of people in every field so uh, i'm always dipping into books always loving that but can i just come back for a moment to your to your friend um the whether they had a psychic vision because i don't imagine the palm would show that show the death of a father uh, to be able specifically to say that whether they had a psychic vision um or were just just picked up on something i don't see much use in saying that in terms of positive use yes it it worried her it may uh, it's like all of it it's in my hand i can't tear up the astrology book it's in my hand there's a power there that we have to be really careful of and uh, i had um a client a few years ago who rang me in a very urgent state. I was in California at the time teaching and they said, can you please see me soon? I'm in a very bad way. And they'd had a little, a minor car crash. And as they stepped out of the car crash, uh, a man came up and said, you must be having a bad transit, which is an astrological uh, planetary movement to your chart. And she said, what, what do you mean? He said, oh, I have a Vedic astrologer, that's an in astrologer using the Vedic Indian system, uh, who looks at all my transits and, and you should go and see him. So she was very shocked from the car crash and felt, well, maybe I need to see somebody. She went to see this um, Vedic astrologer. I'm sure not all Vedic astrologers are like this, but she went to see this Vedic astrologer who said, your chart is very bad at the moment, very accident prone. And I think it must have been February. And she said, between the middle to the end of April of this year, you will either lose a limb or you will die. Well, can you imagine saying that to anybody, of course? And the proviso was, unless you buy the following... Um, remedies and stones and different things so she so she thought it was very odd and she bought a few of them because she was very upset and anxious and then spoke to a friend and they said well actually my astrologer frank clifford over in in london um would never say that so why don't you contact him so we had a session and i sort of unraveled a lot of that i also said to her part of what you're being taught is not to be rushing to astrologers like him or me and being influenced by negativity. You know, I was even saying, you're coming to me for me to counteract that. You're putting your energy into somebody, you're putting your life and your energy into somebody else. And so take it back, you know, rest control back. And I reassured her as much as I could that I didn't see anything in her chart or in her hand that would suggest death or the loss of a limb, etc. And this was probably in March time, around that time. And I wrote to her um, towards the end of April. I had that on my mind. And I wrote to her and I said, apologies for writing to you, but I just want to let, ask if you're, how you're doing, you know? And she said, I'm okay. I got through the period. She said that, he said, but... I was so anxious, in spite of what you said, I did go back and I bought different talismans and different things. So so that astrologer got rich. Yeah, they got rich and they got um, 
uh, they they scared somebody into buying stuff, and that that bothered me. That upset me, and I wish she hadn't. In order to sort of prove him wrong, but I totally understand why she did, because of the circumstances. So, like any subject, there's a lot of people out there not doing their best to help. <laughs> And that's always upsetting to watch. And I have my own experience of that. And I certainly wouldn't put my hands into my life into somebody else's hand where I would feel anxious uh, and believe somebody that told me anything like that. Uh, and maybe it was a lucky hit in the sense that your friend, it just happened to be a coincidence, or maybe they were doing it, but this maybe they psychically tapped into it. But either way, they did nothing to help the person. Um, surely if you were to predict somebody's death, which I don't think is ethical, you'd want to say to them, look, um, you, I, you might do it in a roundabout way. You might say, look, um, this period coming up is, is really important about bonding with your father. That's how I might put it. If I was really worried about something, I might say, you know, um, how do your relationship? We might talk about that. And I might say, how about um, spending more time bonding because there's a, there's a great opportunity to really connect to the moment. And I might leave it in that sort of way. Uh, so at least if something was going to happen, your friend had got the very best out of the relationship um, if they wanted to, again, and maybe, maybe their choice not to do that. But very tricky and very, very sensitive subject. Uh, we have to really steer clear of all of that sort of thing if we can as astrologers and also people uh, doing it, doing it, um, uh, uh, going to see astrologers as well. Uh, have to be careful. A hundred percent. Frank, if you had a billboard on the side of the highway, what would it say? <laughs> what would it say, billboard? Um, I, it'd probably be something like um, live the life you want to live. Maybe um, I, I could think of a better one I, if I gave it more thought, but it's, you know, it could be Carpe Diem, seize the moment, because that's overused by, by many people, of course. But, you know, it's even if you believe in the afterlife or the next life, there's, this is not a dress rehearsal. Yeah. And I don't want to, I'm not going to take the risk of, oh, I'll have a better life next time. <laughs> I want to have it now. I want to enjoy my life now. I don't really want to compromise. We're always told we must compromise in relationships. Um, that's a mistake. We, okay, we've got to adapt. We've got to accommodate. If somebody's living with us, we can't live like we're living alone. But to compromise essentially means to give up who you are very often. And Doing that is uh, is a I'm sounding too dramatic. It's a fate worse than death to live in a shell, living somebody else's life and not attending to what you're here to do. Even if it's one day a week, it you know sometimes life is busy and other people need us and different things. But we've got to attend to who we are. So that would be something like that would be like live now. You know, d don't put it off. Um, I said to a, a client friend of mine recently, uh, you know, the day we die is simply one day of our lives. Yeah, and we can all be worried about that. Time's running out, whatever. And we spend so much, so many days waiting for the day we finally expire. So we might have 20, 30,000 days. I, I've never done the maths um, of, of life, um, but we... Yeah, we've only one day is actually the day we die. And if we put that in perspective, we tend to live more fully uh, every day if we can. So, Frank, out of all the courses you've taken, what course would you recommend to a friend? Um, what course would I recommend? Um, that's interesting. Well, I'm going to just say I'd recommend my own uh, because um, astrology... Uh, wherever you take it, I would recommend the London School of Astrology, uh, whether you come in to see us or do it online. Um, learning astrology just opens up so much awareness. So the LSA wasn't available, wasn't around, hadn't been created when I, uh, when I began. But if it had, I'd recommend it. Um, and it's just, um, it's important to, um, if you're going to learn a subject like astrology, it's, it's important to learn with people who, 
who love teaching, who are enthusiastic about it. And I've been running the school now for 20 years, and I am starting a new term in end of October, and I'm excited. I can't wait to meet the new people in London, the new people online. It's exciting because every new student teaches you something new about astrology and their charts. So, yeah, I would recommend my own, says the Aries. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Frank, tell me about your books. Tell me about your socials. Tell me about your website. How can we connect with you? Oh, well, thank you. Um, I'm Astrologer Frank on Instagram. Uh, I have a a great former student, Stephanie, who puts everything up for me. Otherwise, I just wouldn't bother, you know. <laughs> I've, I've, I'm, um, yeah, I've got too many other things I've, I've, I've got to juggle. Uh, I run the London School of Astrology. We have courses, as I said, online and in person. So people can always go to londonschoolofastrology.com. If they go to the freebie section in the courses, they'll find a load of free things if they sign up for a free account, lots of, uh, I did an open house just two days ago, uh, and I do them usually in the lead up to the new course to show people my approach to astrology, so I do a lot of those, we've got new ones coming up where I just spontaneously read people's charts, they put their details in the chat box, we go on to Zoom, and I put their charts up, and we have a chat about uh, different aspects of their chart, hopefully inspiring hopefully encouraging and fun um and i have a lot of fun doing that so i also write i've written a lot of books you can find uh, all my books on amazon um i have two palmistry books that um have been out for a long time one's called palmistry for today the number four and the other one is called the palm reading guide i think it is uh, they changed the name a few years ago uh, and that's coming out again in america um, in a couple of months. Um, but they've been, luckily, they've been translated into about a dozen languages. So if you speak Japanese, you can find my books in uh, Japanese or in Mandarin or in Spanish. Uh, very lucky with that. Um, so, yes, I just keep doing what I've been doing. It, it's 35 years I've been studying astrology and other things as well now. I'm writing on different other books, different subjects, but that's my real passion, astrology and palmistry. So that's me in a nutshell. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so much, Frank. Frank, say for example, for the two books that you have on palmistry, for the newbie, 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 beginner level, which one would you recommend? The Palm Reading Guide. It's um, a purple book. I should have had it. No, it's somewhere, somewhere in this room. I've got a copy of it, but it's this um, very cute, shiny book uh, that that came out. The student guide is called Palmistry for Today. But if you type in Frank Clifford or Frank C. Clifford, I put the C in there because my dad was Frank Clifford, so it made my life easier to put a C in there. Um, and I do have a middle name, which he didn't. Um, and uh, yeah, just type in Frank Clifford and you'll find astrology and palmistry books. Uh, all over the place yeah. and, and the courses you have a course coming up is you start in end of october but you have the ast astro cartography course beginning in november that's right yes yeah. so if you're a beginner don't waste your money at the moment on something more advanced go into 101 london school of astrology.com have a look at courses there there's a prospectus that gives you all the dates everything is recorded so we have a lot of students who are in australia some of them wake up at 5 a.m to join us i'm always amazed that anybody would do that that's really lovely um and some of them in america some of them all over the world uh but if you can't be there at the time you can be part of the forum ask questions or you can just watch the videos uh when they're uploaded the next day so um we we just have this fabulous group of um of people learning astrology and tarot as well online and hopefully palmistry again next year uh but yes they all start next month but you can start them anytime if you do the online version anyway uh but if you want to come into london we're at the steiner Steiner House, which is in Baker Street, and that's um, or just off Baker Street. And that's um, uh, that starts at the end of October on a Saturday. Yeah. Beautiful, Frank. I just want to say, great big massive thank you. Thank you for taking the time, for sharing your wisdom, your information, and for all the work you've done. For you've done, is it twelve books and more? Um, it's about twelve books. I sometimes have to 
remember i have to count them because i think i don't want to exaggerate but it's about i think it's 12 and there's another 15 little mini books that i've written over the years but yeah i think it's 12. so yeah. thank you for sharing all that and putting all your information your wisdom your expertise and for what you're doing and and especially for all the for the community that you're creating around this and just being there for your students so thank you so much frank Thank you and uh, good luck with your podcast. Enjoy it all and thanks for inviting You're me. You're very, very welcome.